Italy and Spain to the Guardia Civil. I've called the Guardia Civil out many times uh, about dealing with this criminal activity. And it really is a case of physician healed ourselves. Um, and so what we're faced with is this huge moral outrage in the press uh, and also moral outrage with the travel companies. Even I received a letter from a well-known travel company, major travel company, um, which if they'd actually bothered to check their mailing list, they would have realized that they were sending the wrong letter to the wrong fellow. And I have actually confronted uh, their head of regulatory and indeed the chairman of that company, saying, why on earth are you sending me a letter like this? You know perfectly well what the problem is. Let's get together. Let's talk. Let's join forces. And let's deal with this issue of those consumers who are being encouraged or incited uh, to uh, make these claims. But let's also accept uh, that actually it's not the big problem uh, that you are claiming. Uh, and that also you, the travel industry, also need to develop a quality product. You're listening to The Travel Show with John Gwynn on UKHealthRadio.com. I'm sorry that the audio got a little bit scratchy during that segment with Frank. It was a mobile-to-mobile conversation and something went wrong, probably my end. But I felt that the information that Frank was sharing was important enough to keep into the show and for you, hopefully for you to persevere with. Moving on from sickness now and still with people making claims with uh, travel problems, me and Frank are now going to be talking about the recent problems with BA and their computer system. BA's had a spot of bother over the last few weeks and they made a big song and dance about how they're going to be compensating passengers affected, saying we're going to do this, but they had to do it anyway under law, which they didn't actually say under law we have to do this, they just said we're going to do this. But the onus was on passengers to actually put the claim in to get what they're entitled to. Do you think BA handled the uh, the problem when the IT shut down in a good way or a bad way? <laughs> I, I, w- I was on the airwaves and on the television virtually over the whole of that weekend. And it was a... Um, it was a rapidly evolving situation. Um, and it's still, uh, there are still lots of uh, answers to questions that have remained unanswered. But, um, you know, the, the, the simple fact of the matter, as I said at that time, was that uh, there were three words um, that were most important in all of this, and they were disaster recovery plan. And, you know, major company or corporation, even a small company, should have a disaster recovery plan. And there was a commentary made that uh, their backup system failed to uh, click in, uh, and uh, that was what caused the problem. Um, Well, it's all right having a backup plan, but if you don't have a plan that goes beyond the backup plan, which is what you should have, something that's off-site, and something that um, you know uh, has a copy of data, if you like, so that it can it can rejig itself, albeit in a temporary form. Uh, then uh, you can surely expect uh, consumers and customers to be angry, um, and that's exactly what happened. And then we saw uh, through uh, the early days about how the airline decided that they were going to. Um, put a figure on the amount of money that people could claim. And I think at the time, uh, I, I think I said uh, that £50 pounds, uh, travel expenses, you'd be lucky to get a, a taxi from Heathrow, from Heathrow to the centre of London with your bags for uh, um, less than £100. Pounds. Um, so some of those figures were um, a little uh, difficult because the regulations basically say, you know, you will uh, uh, help, uh, the, uh, you know, put the customer in a hotel. I think they put a limit of £200 a night on a hotel in London. Uh, that is an aspiration rather than reality. Um, and so, therefore, uh, consumers were uh, left up in the air when, in fact, 
if there was a proper disaster pl uh, recovery plan running, um, they would have been able to auto deal uh, with uh, the flight delay and cancellation issues uh, via a backup website. It was just a complete and utter uh, omni shambles. Um, but of course, as is often the case with uh, flight delay and cancellation cases, uh, airlines are very good at saying, well, we comply with the law, but actually the law requires you, the airline, to do something for consumers while they're stuck at the airport. Um, not tell them to go away, make their own arrangements and present uh, the invoices, and maybe several months later you'll get repaid. The law doesn't say that. The law is not a smorgasbord. Um, it is there very clearly setting out what those rights are, and uh, consumers um, have a right to expect those rights to be delivered, um, irrespective of whether uh, the airport is in chaos because of what has happened. Um, if you've got a good disaster recovery plan, you'll be able to deal with this. Um, I've been in a similar situation myself at uh, Dublin Airport, as I said to you a moment ago, John, I'm not an ordinary consumer. I don't class myself as an ordinary consumer uh, because of the knowledge that I've got. Uh, but I watched uh, the airline's uh, Tannoy announcements basically to go away, go home and, and log on and book your, your flight, forgetting, of course, that the passengers had a right to care. Uh, they had a right to rerouting. They had a right to um, overnight stays and so on and so forth. Um, uh, whatever about uh, refreshments and telephone calls and uh, emails and everything else, uh, I can tell you this consumer made sure that he, when he got to the front of the queue, he uh, asked for and got all of the rights that are given to any passenger uh, within the flight uh, delay cancellation denied boarding regulations. Um, uh, and I, I do think that it was um, wholly unnecessary um, uh, for uh, consumers to be dealt with like this or but for the want of planning. You can follow me on Twitter at holiday underscore hut. There are posters at Luton Airport and I've from experience that tell you what your rights are but they're all in areas where people are not congregating. They're posters that are on the wall as you walk past and if you're not mm. looking for them you're not going to be there to see what you're entitled to. So do you think with the tickets, when you print them out, you should have a, not the summary, but exactly what you're entitled to under law, <laughs> along with the ticket? Or do you think it's down to the consumer really to find out for themselves? Well, the law says that when you are delayed or cancelled or whatever, you're supposed to receive a written notice. Mm -hmm. And the consumers I've spoken to um, told me that they hadn't received a written notice. Maybe they, maybe some did, maybe some received them by email. Um, I, I don't know fully what the situation is, but I have been in flight delay scenarios where I haven't received a written notice. Uh, but I have demanded one and I have received one because that's what the law says. Um, but I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, in 2010, I was at the Department of Transport at a meeting to define the new consumer objective. And the point you've uh, just raised about having information on flight delay, cancellation rights, and so on, was made by me. And it was made by me um, in this forum with uh, airlines and the like, all sat around the table. And I said, you know, you can produce this as a PDF document attached to your e-ticket. And, you know, you can give it uh, to your passengers at the time uh, they uh, book and pay for their flight ticket. And there was uproar in the room from the airlines. And I asked them, well, why do you not want to do this? And they said, because our marketing department won't like it. And uh, <laughs> I pointed out to them, um, uh, they, they said it was negative news about the airline. And I pointed out to them that when you get on an aircraft, there's a small thing called a flight safety announcement. And there's a card in the seat pocket in front of you which tells you that this flight, this aircraft may crash. And I said, how bad has the news got to be before you'll actually print or publish anything? Um, anyway, they, they wouldn't accept this, um, but it seems utterly common sense to me 
if you want to win the hearts and minds of consumers and you're running you know a good efficient airline you won't mind handing out that information at the time they book their holiday so they've got it to hand um and it would actually save them an awful lot of time uh, uh you know um uh, dealing with the, the terminal uh, when these events uh, take place, despite the fact that they are still entitled to have a written notice, but you know, let's let's uh, let's all be grown up about it, airlines, and let's start to provide information on these rights, including if you're flying from a foreign destination, um, a list of the civil aviation authority in that country that you can complain to in the event that something goes wrong with your uh, flight departure time. Checking it out before you check in on the John Gwynn Travel Show on UKHealthRadio.com. I'm speaking to Frank from Holiday Travel Watch and we're going to continue with airlines. We're going to talk about no f- low cost, no frills and probably some of the flag carriers now and hidden charges. Not so long ago, somebody came to me and said that we should do something about a particular low-cost airline because they've just ripped me off. And he was talking about uh, luggage, uh, hand luggage fees he had to pay to take his case on board where he believed that the website said hand luggage is free. And it is, providing your case is small enough. His case is too big. It might have been okay for Ryanair, EasyJet, or just about anybody else, but for this particular airline, it wasn't okay. But it wasn't anything wrong with the airline, as far as I'm concerned. It's, they've been doing it for a few years, and it's quite clear on the website. But I am a travel expert, he says in inverted air commas. But anyway, uh, me and Frank are now going to be discussing hidden charges with airlines. Well, um, uh, uh, essentially, uh, you'll see the press wax lyrical about this, and they refer to it as hidden charges. Um, they aren't hidden charges uh, as such. They, they may be difficult to find, but if you are looking carefully at what you are buying, you will see the list of prices uh, associated with each a particular product as you as you take your journey through a particular website. And even if you don't see it, you should be checking the summary. You should be checking those terms and conditions. Because it's the old saying, the devil is in the detail. And if you don't read the detail, if you're trying to book a holiday, uh, book a flight in five minutes flat, you're going to miss um, uh, some of the um, uh, key uh, points, particularly in relation uh, to cost. I, I mean, there was there was one uh, which is just to mind, uh, John, uh, where I was booking a flight. They they refer to themselves as a low cost airline. I don't believe one exists anymore. But um, this one was saying it was a low cost airline, and I I didn't actually need uh, any hand baggage because I was only travelling um, back and forth for the day, and. Um, uh, essentially, they had also defaulted um, a small handbag baggage for me to bring into the cabin and charge me for doing so. And I um, I hadn't noticed this. And it's this, this key point. And when I went to check um, what I had got in my summary, I realized that they put this bag on. And um, I took it off, obviously, um, and it came up with several subscreens, which says, are you really sure about this? Is this something you want to do? You know it's going to cost you an awful lot more at the airport. Yes, I do. I know it's going to cost a lot more at the airport if I change my mind because I've read the terms and conditions. Um, and this is what consumers have got to guard against. Guard against what you're buying at the time as you go through the process, but also think strategize your thinking, well, okay, I'm not bringing X, Y, and Z with me, but what if I change my mind? How much is that going to cost? Where am I going to find the answer to that? Dip into the terms and conditions and dip into the information on baggage on these airlines' websites, and there you will find the answers. It's the same with boarding cards. You know, if you don't print off your boarding card, it's no point in complaining that you didn't know because you ticked the box to say that you read the terms and conditions. 
And you need to make sure that you understand if you forget your boarding card or you don't print it off, what it's going to cost. 